first of all, just uh, want to want to thank everybody here. You know, obviously we, we see each other a lot every single day, and just you know appreciate the the relationship, the professionalism. Um, I know a, a a lot you guys have to do, and always respect uh, the job you guys have to do. So just uh, for this entire season, just wanted to thank everybody here for that. Any questions, guys? Looking back, how how much damage did losing Andre do? Looking back at it. Well, you know, I, I you go back as a coach, and you know, when you're in the midst of um, you know a long season. There's a lot of things that happen. I think, you know, as the season started, um, we clearly were an extremely elite defensive team with Andre out there. Uh, I think our struggles early in the year was, you know, finding a balance offensively. You know, the first month of the season, I thought we really struggled offensively. I think once we got that kind of cleaned up, um, we started to play really, really good basketball. And then I think when Andre went down, it, it put us in a situation to kind of have to almost start over again, reinvent ourselves, find ourselves, um, you know, and then I thought, you know, towards the end of the season, we started to play better, but there were certainly different times during the season where, you know, we got one thing resolved and we're really moving in the right direction. Something popped up. We had to get something else, you know, resolved, you know, kind of go back to the drawing board. And I think with a, a team of, of so many new p pieces, um, there was constant change going on, you know, during the course of the season. So, you know, it, in, it impacted our team. But I think the uh, pickup of Corey, you know, late gave us uh, some added length and size on the wing, and he did a really good job for us. Um, but we were constantly, I think, evolving, you know, as the season, you know, unfolded uh, from start to finish. When you talk about new pieces and, you know, the, the constant change the roster's had since you've been with the, with the club, is that something that comes up in the off season or within conversations with Sam when it comes to your job security? Because you know, it's been three seasons, and I don't know how you guys measure the progress that you're supposed to have. But um, with the roster flipping over as much as it does, is that something that's talked about? I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand the question. With the roster, like the roster overall from season to season, um, is that? kind of a, a factor that plays into your job security like you know since you have so many different rosters it's like Sam is kind of giving you the leeway to continue to experiment to continue to go forward because you haven't had the continuity that some other teams have had yeah I don't know I think that you know basically things have, have changed since I've been here you know I kind of inherited a team that um, you know was kind of pretty much together for a long period of time you know then obviously um, there were some changes made um, you know once Kevin left you know and then there was some changes made this year, so the roster has changed. Um, you know, I've got, like I've said this before, I got a lot of trust and faith and confidence in Troy and in Sam. Um, you know, I love working with those guys. I really have enjoyed the guys that are here right now. You know, every year the roster's turned over. I think we've had a great group of guys. Um, but, you know, every year you're working with the players that you have. Um, and I think Sam and Troy are making the best decisions to constantly try to help the team be better. Do you ever feel comfortable having the autonomy as a coach to, to say bench Carmelo Anthony or, or limit his minutes in the season? Because you know, we saw in this series that he probably wasn't as, as effective as he had been in the regular season. Um, but you know, he was a detriment defensively at times as well. So did you have that autonomy as a coach? Or did you feel like you had that throughout the entire season to be able to make the decision to put a guy on the bench? Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam has totally let me you know, coach the team. Um, there's things that we talk about all the time, you know, about how to put our heads together to constantly evolve and grow the team. Um, Carmelo, I think, has done a great job, uh, you know, coming in. First thing was, I think, obviously changing positions for him, going from a small forward to a power forward. I think coming into a new role and trying to figure out how he can fit in and maybe, um, I don't want to use the word reinvent himself, but playing a role that maybe has been different for him throughout the majority of his career and some of the sacrifices that he's had to make. Um, you know, and then again, I think decision wise in, in the jazz series, um, there were some things lineup wise and things we were trying to do di differently that I felt like Jeremy, um, could be really effective for us. But, you know, going into the last week and a half of the season, you know, I think Carmelo had a lot to do with us, uh, you know, 
making the run that we did the last week and a half of the season. You know, he was incredible uh, in the Houston game on the road, you know, one of the last games of the year to help us in that game. He was incredible in the first half. I think he had 20 points. He played really, really well at Miami. Um, and then obviously we went into a team that uh, in Utah was a really, really good defensive team. They were probably maybe the hottest team, you know, after the All-Star break with the way they were playing. There was some things that we did maybe a little bit differently adjustment-wise and, you know, going with Jeremy there. But I don't think that that should put the two games there should put into a microcosm of, of what Carmelo did the entire season. Last night you kind of touched on a feeling of optimism of, you know, if you're able to keep this group together, the progress that you all can make this summer heading into training camp and next year. What maybe specifically about this group do you feel like has the chance to grow or take some steps forward? Well, there was there was things that we did really really well this year. Um, you know, the first thing is that when you when you have half the roster change uh, from one year to the next, the first thing you worry about is the connection, the chemistry, and how guys are together working with each other. Because there's always going to be things you have to resolve and fix, and and work through. And the only way you're able to do that is by guys willing to work on those things. And I thought from start to finish they were constantly trying to work on things to help us be a better team. Okay. Um, I think the character of the guys, the kind of people that they are, um, the fact that they were willing to sacrifice, the willing to work together, willing to try to get better, really, really excited me. Um, I was very, very, and very optimistic going forward because of their willingness to do those things. Now, the other side of that, too, is I think every team has challenges to deal with. And, and our biggest challenge to try to figure out, I think, in this offseason is, is our consistency. You know, that, that has been a problem. That's going to be obviously my major focus. I think it needs to be our team's major focus is how do we become more consistent because we did some things where we certainly played at elite level against some of the elite teams, so we know we can play with them. There were some moments that, you know, we played against teams that uh, maybe were non-playoff teams that, you know, we, we, we weren't consistent. But those are things I think that we have to work on and we have to get better at for the team to continue to get better and to improve. But because of the people and the kind of guys they are and the fact that the chemistry and the locker room and their, their, their willingness to work with one another, that's got to be the next step. And there was a lot of things for us to figure out with so many new faces coming in. And from start to finish, they were willing to do those things. Why is it you surprised the consistency wasn't there considering they were willing, as you said, and you got some veteran guys that you never seen to find that? that yeah, I mean, I think that, that's, that for us it's, uh, you know, when, when, I'm, when I say I'm optimistic, you know, about it is when we started the season, we were really, really bad on offense. I mean, really bad. We we were like 24th in the league. The thing that was keeping us afloat the first month of the season was we were such an elite defensive team. We figured that part of it out, and we finished the season a top 10 offensive team in the league, going from 24. So that has a lot to do with, with those guys' willingness. The consistency part is stuff that we've all got to put our heads together. You know, and that will be my focus in the offseason. How do we get better being a consistent team, regardless of who we're playing? Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect or you're not going to have a bad night, or but we can be more consistent on what I consider the controllables, things that we have control over. We can be more of a cons consistent team, and I think that we've got to do that. We've got to be more consistent on offense with ball movement and player movement. We got to be more consistent on defense when it comes to transition defense and blocking out and and uh, the discipline on schemes. There's times we do it at a high level, and there was times we we, we we didn't do it at a high enough level. That's what we have to work on. That's that's. I think every team always has a, a bear to cross or a burden that they've got to try to overcome. But I think over 82 games is a body of work that it's clearly in front of us of what we got to focus on and get to work on and figure out a way to improve. And because of the character of these guys and the kind of people they are, that's where our focus needs to be. So that kind of gives me a level of optimism and excitement um, with the group because it's the first year together and there was a lot of information that came from this year that I think we can pinpoint and address. I think everybody knew coming into the season how is this going to work? How are they going to all fit together? How are they going to gel? How are they going to mesh? How is all these things going to kind of come together? And everybody knew it was going to be a process, and the players knew it was going to be a process. But you, you're unable to, before the season starts, okay, what's going to be this team's challenge? I think everybody thought the challenge was, okay, how are all these guys going to fit in? Well, as the season went on, we got better offensively, and they fit in pretty well. Uh, but no one knew coming in, hey, th this was going to be our challenge. We knew it as the season unfolded but we've got to find a better way to, to, to get that resolved and fixed.
when it comes to the uh, Billy, is, it, is it your expectation that, that you will be back next year as that coach and have you, have you had conversations with Sam will you have conversations? I just said I mean I'm excited about uh, you know the organization I love working with Sam um, the people that are here so um, I haven't given any any thought to that my, my total focus has been how do we get better and improve you and Sam you, you and Sam sit down after every season and you have that conversation of course it's about the season and about what oh we always talk about the season you know ways to get the team better um you know, different things that he's thinking about doing, um, you know, in the off season. Um, you know, like I said, um, I trust Sam and, 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 and Troy, you know, with the personnel, that's what they do. And then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with the team. Do you feel like there's any need to maybe even mend fences with Carmelo? I mean, it's tough the last two games for a guy who's been in the league as long as he has, with the pride that he has, to play less minutes in the final two playoff games. Any fences need to be mended there in terms of going forward with him? Well, Carmelo, to me, has been a consummate pro. Um, I think there was a lot made of, you know, game five, him wanting to be out there, and I respect that, and I said that from his competitiveness. But um, I think going forward, um, you know, Carmelo's been a total pro, and he's been a total team guy. Um, and there were decisions that, you know, I made, um, you know, during the courses of, of, of game five and six. I think some of those situations were really unique. I mean, we were down by 25 points in game five with eight minutes to go or so, and we won an incredible run, you know. But Carmelo was a huge part and huge piece of, of helping us get to that point, you know, throughout the course of 82 games. As a coach, when they have that mentality of, like, our record is good against the, the better teams in the league or that were built for the postseason, do you feel that that's kind of dangerous to – have as a mentality in locker room. And I know there are a lot of things that we don't know that goes on. Well, I never felt we were built for the playoffs. You know, I don't think that I, I've never subscribed to that mentality. Um, we've got a guys got guys with a lot of experience, um, but we, you know, again have I think got to be much much more consistent. You know, to your point, um, but I've never subscribed of you know what you're, you when, when a game starts. It, it doesn't make a difference what you're built for. It's, it's that moment. Um, there's 82 of them, and we were fortunate enough to get to postseason. So, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're trying to be the best version of yourself every time you step on the floor and play. I know you said you let Sam kind of handle and deal with all the personnel issues, but when it comes to guys like maybe Paul coming back or Jeremy or Raymond, how much of a role do you play in that as far as you talking with them or staying in communication or with them and Sam about – what their intentions might be and what you would like to have happen. Well, I think, you know, again, this, the, we, we just finished playing last night. Um, like I said, I'm, I, I loved coaching Paul. Um, I loved him as a person, as a human being. Um, I loved his unselfishness, um, who he is uh, as a player. Uh, I think it can only get better for him here um, after having one year together. Um, I'm excited about that. I hope I get a chance to coach Paul for a long time. Um, but... Sam and Troy will sit down and talk with me about you know those those things, but we haven't had time. We just got we got in last night at four o'clock in the morning, and you know came in here this morning to do this, and then we'll meet with the team and have eggs and interviews. So there'll be a time and place for all that this week. Billy, that Russ does is always magnified good performance, bad performance. But what if, what have you seen from him? Just the way he was able to adapt himself to a different team, just from last year's situation going into this year again. Um, you know, I, I, I think some of Russell's struggles to start the year were him trying to incorporate a bunch of new guys to our team. And I think as he figured things out, he got better and better uh, as the season went along. Um, and he, he, he takes his job very serious, and he takes the responsibility of a point guard and a leader very serious. So for him, he was always trying to find ways to make the group better, uh, to balance himself in with the group, to communicate with those guys. Um, I think the dialogue to figure out how to maximize each other on the court, and not only Paul and Carmelo, but Patrick Patterson and Raymond Felton and Alex Sabrinas, Jerry, everybody. He was always trying to do that. So um, I've always admired his competitiveness, uh, the way he plays between the lines, but also admire the fact that with last year's team being different than this year's team, his willingness to try to make all that kind of fit together in, in a good way. Billy, you look back on the season in its totality. Is there something you personally would like to improve on or you know, maybe address differently as you move forward with your coaching career in this league? Um, 
Well, I mean, every year as a coach, you're always trying to evaluate, you know, areas that you can help your team get better and improve. And th there's, oh, oh, I'll always evaluate, you know, things I can try to do better. So that's no different for me. I've done that my whole entire career. I, I feel a strong sense of always wanting to improve and get better individually, but also finding ways to help our group improve and get better. So we, you know, these experiences, um, I had a conversation with Mo Cheeks um, about this, and he, you know, he said, you know, I've, I've been in the league for 40 years, and I only had a chance to experience a ring one time in my life. They're so hard. You know, I, obviously I've been in college for the majority of my career, and now this being my third year in the NBA, I've had a chance to experience championship twice. So when you sit there and a season comes to a close, I've learned that you can't just take bad year, good year, because does that mean it was wasted? Like if you don't, if you're not happy at the end of the year because you're the last team standing, was everything for nothing? And there was probably a point in time in my career I really felt that way. And then I learned is it's really about what did you learn and what do you take what you learned and how do you apply it to get yourself better? And through those experiences, you individually grow and I think you help the team grow. So for me, that's my focus on, okay, how do we become more consistent? You know, how do we do a better job of being more consistent on both ends of the floor? How do we do a better job of, of having at times really, really good ball movement and other times is not good ball movement? Like how do we do those things? So these are, I think, lessons that you learn and grow from. But the biggest thing is how do you apply what you've learned and what you've grown from to make yourself and the group better the following year? Bill, you had the experience with, with Kevin in his final season and then going into free agency. And then now you have the experience with Paul um, going into potentially going into free agency as well, um, you know, we kind of shied away from making the comparisons between those two because obviously they're they're both two different people. But it's undeniable that they're both, you know, superstar talents at that small four position with big decisions to make. Just the feel that you got from Kevin going into his final days here, how does that compare to the feel you've got going into to, to Paul? Yeah, I, I don't know if I can compare that. I mean, like I said, um, I, I think Paul. Um, you know, was, and so was Kevin. I really enjoyed being with Kevin, but I think they're two totally different people. Um, you know, I think for Paul, like I said earlier, I think um, this being his first year, um, I loved coaching him, loved being around him. Uh, I think we're only going to be better uh, next year after having a year under our belt. And like I said earlier, I hope I get the opportunity to coach him, you know, several more years for a long time. Well, you know, Jeremy, when he, when he came here, was a, a, a little bit different for me because I had a chance to coach him two years at USA Basketball, so there was a prior relationship to, to, with him coming here. Um, you know, he, he's the, I feel the same way about him. You know, he's a great guy. Hope I get the chance to coach him a long time as well. Um, he is just, in my opinion, from year to year, just continued to get better and, and has improved. And um, he, he should really personally be encouraged by that because his role the last two years has drastically changed. You know, he never played the center spot at all for us in terms of uh, uh, on the offensive end. You know, we had Ennis here last year and Steven. There was no room for him there. But because of Steven, um, you know, when we went with Jeremy at the five, it was a totally new position. And I give him a lot of credit that he really flourished in that role. I think it speaks to his ability, his talent. Um, and his, his, his intelligence as a player, that he can play so many different positions and understand assignments on both ends of the floor. Can you talk about the, the offense and more ball movement and improving that? Is that schematically, is that getting the players to buy into it more? What, ha what has to happen to get that? Because that's been something that's talked about a lot throughout the season. How do you do that? Yeah, we have, we, we have moments where we're really, really good at it, and then we have some moments that we're not so good at it. And I think probably for our team coming together, it's all been a little bit different for every guy throughout his career, you know, from where they've been. You know, what the situation Carmelo was in, you know, in New York, the situation Paul was in uh, in Indiana, uh, the situation Russell has been in the last couple of years, the situation Patrick Patterson's been in or Raymond Felton's been in. So you're trying to get to a balance where the – the effectiveness offensively is something that's sustainable over 82 games. Now, I think that they made significant growth in strides because, like I said, I'd be the first one to admit the first month of the season, you know, the thing that kept us afloat was our defense. 
you know, we were really, really good defensively. We were not good offensively. And I think once we started to improve, I mean, we went from being 24th to a top 10 offense. So I think it's something that we need to build upon and we need to get better at. We did show signs to get better at it, but I think for us to keep taking steps in the right direction, we have got to be a, a, a team that is playing on a regular basis sustainable on the offensive end. Also, with that being said, I'd say the same thing on the defensive end. You know, we've got to have things that are going to be sustainable over 82 games. There's times we do it for, for pockets. There's times we don't. And that's the consistency part we all got to figure out. What do you want to see Terrence Couple Ferguson do in the offseason to become more of an impact player? I thought Terrence had a great year. Um, I give him a lot of credit for a young player being ready. He was in and out of the rotation, uh, and, and he was ready. Um, so I think having a summer under his belt after having an experience here in the NBA is only going to help him get better, but I think he's got a very bright future. Well, you've talked a lot all year about the consistency thing and everything for Flake Jags all year. When you evaluate the season, what, what role do you feel like you play in that consistency? What's your job in, in getting this to Yeah, I mean, I mean, my job is to constantly you know, put those things in front of those guys to have a level of uh, you know, the accountability to be able to show them on film you know, when we're at our best and when we're not at our best, things that we need to do. Um, I, I think like anything else, you've got to build habits in those areas. And sometimes when the habits maybe aren't there, you have a tendency to revert back to kind of what you know a little bit. And that's for all of our guys. But we've got to be able to uh, see those things, look at those things, accept those things, and understand that that's a challenge for us that we've got to overcome as a team, you know. And, you know, going into the season – you know, you know, I always write down things that are going to be challenges for our team. You know, the chemistry, how we're going to handle adversity, um, the connection on the court and off the court, um, the the willingness to handle the accountability on responsibility jobs and those kind of things. And then as you're going through, I think as your team evolves, you find things that are holding your team back. And as a coach, you feel responsible to help them get better at the things that are holding them back and then have them try to take ownership in those things to put forth the attention um, on whatever those things are. And like for us, there was a lot of things. You know, one of the things that was holding us back was offense. We were 24th for a period of time. We got better at that. Uh, we were really getting hurt uh, on the defensive glass, you know, in the beginning of the year. We got better at that. Uh, you know, we were a team that finished top 10, but we were one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the league, and we were still top 10. I mean, we probably left four or five points every game on the board. You know, can we get better free throws? So there's a lot of things you look at that are holding your team back that you try to put in front of the guys to get them to constantly grow and get better at those things. And there's a lot on those guys' plates. You know what I mean? they got to play. They're dealing with scouting reports and those kind of things. But you're always trying to, as a coach, put things in front of them that are going to help move the needle to help our team get better. You talked all year about the sacrifices that Melo's made, him being one of the guys who made the most sacrifice. At the at the number he's coming back at next year, if he does come back, um, can you get him to take a reduced role? Uh, can you get him to come? I, I, I don't. I don't listen. Th 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 though Carmelo, and 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 I, and I get it. Um, you know, he he is a guy that I got an enormous amount of respect for. He's a great team guy, and. I think that taking two games and me making a decision in two games, and, and I think that those decisions that I made in those particular times, you know, it, I'm not saying it helped or hurt, but our team was playing well in those situations there. So Carmelo is an important piece to this, you know, for, for us. And he's part of the team like anybody else. And I appreciate the fact that this guy has been a 10-time All-Star, He's come into a situation where he's had to totally reinvent himself. He's tried everything to do that. He's always put the team first. He had one moment that he wanted to be in the game because of the competitor that he is. I'd rather have guys like that than, than someone that doesn't care. He really, really cares. So it's not about going into next year saying, hey, listen, you're having a reduced role. This is your role. I don't even know what our team's going to look like next year. You know. So for me, all I w want to make sure is how do I, as a coach, in, in Carmelo's role changing, how do myself and the rest of the guys enhance his role, make him better his role? Because he's not ISOing as much as he did in New York, it's the responsibility of myself and the rest of the group to try to find ways for him to get more shots and to take more threes 
and to get him in good spots of the floor. That's everybody's responsibility. And I think for Carmelo, I give him credit because there was times where, you know what, he probably could have gotten more shots up, but maybe we missed him. By no one's fault and no one, you know, no one doing anything intentionally, but it was all different for him in a lot of ways, and he could not have handled himself any better, and I have great respect for him for that. His season and where you think his ceiling can be because he makes like he made a big jump this year. Well, where can he go? I think Stephen. I haven't talked to anybody yet. I think Stephen. Stephen's success this year, in my opinion, had everything to do with what happened last summer. He had an incredible summer um, of work. You know, he was here. He was back in New Zealand. Um, he came in in great shape. Um, he was really, really prepared. I think one of the things that happened the year before is he certainly had a bigger role that was new to him. It was the first time he had to go through it. Um, and I think those experiences applied with the summer of what he knew he was going to have to do as a player really helped him grow. And I thought he had an incredible year, but I thought the year started right when our season ended last year. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.